Third shot drop versus third shot drive. How to know which shot to hit and why. That's what you're about to learn. Swipe, well, let's just establish what is that third shot of the rally. Serve is the first, return is the second, and then this is the third. The legendary general Sun Tzu said, victorious warriors win first, then go to war. Defeated warriors go to war, then seek to win. In fact, Tyler actually shared this quote with me. And so how would you say this relates to your game? I just get into a point and I try to win it without any sort of a plan. I need to have a plan and intent so I can react and have a why if I'm driving or dropping, as opposed to just like hit the ball and hope. So most players, they go in and they actually don't have any intent, which makes sense. If you've never played before, you're not gonna understand the patterns or even what intent would look like. But that's what this video is about. About is to help you establish more intent in order to help you win more games. Because the players that win first, then go to battle, that have a plan, then go and play, are the ones that tend to win more than the other players. So let's take that one step further. The question is not necessarily, should I drop or drive? A little bit of it is, and we'll talk about that. But from a bigger picture, the principle is be strong where your opponent is weak. So let's get into some of the scenarios for how you can attack your opponent when they are weak. One thing you've probably heard is, if the ball is a short return and it bounces slightly high, you should probably drive. True, but what you might not know is why. Let's talk about it. He gives me a really short return that's high. He's on the move, as you just saw. When somebody's on the move after their return, they're vulnerable. They're somewhat off balance. To hit a volley on the move is a challenging shot, but there's nuance to it. You don't have to hit a drive at the person on the move because they also know if they've hit a short return, they're often gonna get the ball blasted at them. So you could hit a more aggressive drop and it'll still be effective. Because remember the principle is attack them when they are weak. And where are they weak? Well, they're weak when they're on the move and they're weak when they're off balance. Balance. Quick interruption. This video is sponsored by Selkirk. I'm using the Invicta Power Air, the sick colorway. Go to Selkirk.com, use my code, get a digital gift card toward a future purchase. Back to the video. So let's talk about another scenario where your opponent might be weak on volleying balls. If you've already driven a couple balls at somebody and they've dumped them into the net or hit them long, that might be a good indicator. They're not good at handling pace and power. So keep driving the ball to them. Now Luke is actually very strong at handling volleys. Let's just assume for a second that Luke is out of the two partners let's assume he's actually the weaker partner at handling volleys. In this scenario, let's assume JT is also pretty fast at getting to the kitchen. And maybe he's also good at handling volleys on the move. So I might say, well, that's not where they're as weak. JT being on the move isn't their biggest weakness. Maybe it's Luke's ability to handle pressure where they're the most weak. So that's where I might go. Nice. I forgot the greatness of my drive. <laughs> which is actually a good point if I just stop for a second, is part of when should I drop, when should I drive is based on personnel. Who am I, who are they, right? We're talking a little bit about attack them where they are weak. Well, there's another component to this, which is attack them where you know you are strong. I, for a long time, had a really bad drive. I'm trying to improve it right now. It's getting better. And so when I wasn't good at it, I would actually go to it less because I knew that my drop was something I was more comfortable and confident hitting with consistency. So part of this decision-making process to put them in a tougher position position is to do the thing that you are strong at. Let's talk about another scenario. Part of where confidence and strength comes from is from certainty. So for a long time in matches, I would drop 100% of balls because it was where I was most confident. So that's what I would do. However, when they started to recognize the pattern, I'm going to drop every single time. Well, that's certainty of what I'm about to do. That gave them confidence. I want to keep them on their toes. I want to be more unpredictable. So they are not as confident, meaning they're going to be a little weaker. Attack them where they are weak. So let's assume for a second, I've driven every single ball. I'm going to change it up with the drop. So in this situation, in as we've been filming this video, I've driven every single ball at JT over there on the left. So as a partner, what do you think Luke's gonna start to do? He's gonna start to cheat over to cover his partner. And when I notice that, or when I realize when I've driven every ball to one location, I'm gonna potentially drop the ball over to Luke's backhand. Let's see if it works. Got him, watch this. <laughs> Ooh, nice get. Yeah! <laughs> sneak attack. I sneak attacked him. <laughs> Zoom in on Luke's face. He's so confused. <laughs> I'm a child. I'm a child. I'm a child. I'm a child. <laughs> All right, here's another scenario of, you know, when you drop, when you drive. Well, especially for players at the very beginning, hitting a drive over and over just feels a little better. It's also often like a little bit easier to just rip the ball as hard as you can. You are somebody that likes, let's throw your duper up real quick. That's a lie, that's not your duper. Let's get your real duper up for a second. 
it still seems too high. <laughs> <laughs> Why did, for a long time, you dro drove 100% of balls? And by 100%, I'm not even exaggerating. Yeah, well, it's just because I dropped it so high and the point would be over. I wasn't confident in my drop, so I put him into the net and I just wanted to keep playing. So I just drive him because I knew okay. I'd get over the net. So he hit the ball really high, right? And if that happens consistently over and over and over, he's going to get frustrated as his partner. I'm going to be like, dude, do something different. That different would look a little something like a drive in this situation. All right, next scenario. So earlier you heard me talk about if somebody's bad at like blocking a drive, a volley, they're not good at volleying, maybe go after them. That would be a good idea to drive, right? But now let's talk about what if one of them is not very good at their fourth shot, right? My serve is the first, their return is the second, right? Our third is the drop of the drive, their fourth is the next ball. If you've identified that one of them doesn't apply very much pressure, and as you can see in this clip, here's what applying four shot pressure looks like, but not a lot of people actually apply pressure that well. So if you've identified they don't apply a lot of four shot pressure, hit your drop to their side because it'll be much easier for you to get into the kitchen where you're at your greatest advantage on the court. The kitchen advantage is the greatest advantage you can have. Let's actually just identify that, that JT has, yep. is a weaker four shot person and he's on the move here. So it's like a double attack them where they're weak. So let's yep. go after JT wherever we drop, yep. okay? Play the point, okay, here we go. So we're in. Right? Boom. So I hit a pretty good drop and JT didn't apply much pressure. So if I've noticed that early in a match or early in your rec play, I'm probably gonna go back his direction because I felt very confident coming to the kitchen line without a lot of pressure back my way. I'm gonna actually miss it a little bit high, yeah. but let's just handle it. Yeah. Right? Now JT's pissed. He's starting to do <laughs> dumb stuff, which also will happen, right? If you go after the same person over and over, they get a little frustrated. On that example, JT, when he came to the line, he could have taken the ball out of the air. I also, just another data point, he didn't take the ball out of the air. He stepped back, which also showed me maybe one, he's not, he doesn't like taking balls out of the air. He's uncomfortable. He's afraid of my pressure. And so that's a good sign. JT might be the guy in this partnership that I'm going to hit more drops to, again, because I can get to the kitchen line more easily. So as Sun Tzu said the victorious warrior wins the battle then goes to war the defeated warrior goes to war then tries to win so attack them where they're weak so if they are unwinding a stack right and there's i'll have a whole video check the description below about stacking if you don't know what stacking is watch that video then come back to this section if you do know stay with me so what's going to happen here we're setting it up right now but this happens all the time you'll have to recognize and then identify then execute when you see this in an actual game we're going to return to jt he's going to return it wherever he wants and then jt is going to get over to his stronger side luke's going to move over to his preferred side. That's what stacking is all about. It's about playing on the preferred side or where you play best. It's where your strengths are to avoid weaknesses. Again, video in the description below. And now we have a JT who's not just running up to the kitchen line, but we have a JT who's running across to the opposite kitchen line. So if you know anything about triangles, a straight line for JT is a shorter distance than the hypotenuse where he has to go from where he is now to where Luke is currently standing. That's a weakness that we can expose. Right? So, Tyler, that was sick, by the way. Thank you. Put thank that you. down as compliment number two. <laughs> don't get those often. It took me a long time to figure out, hey, I should probably pay attention to one, if they're stacking, and two, if they're on the, quote, wrong side on the return, where they're gonna have to unwind their stack, I should try to be strong where they are weak. So because we knew that, should I drop or should I drive? That's not necessarily the right question. The question is, where can we be strong where they are gonna be the weakest? I am more confident in hitting my roll drop cross court than I am driving it. So as I noticed he was coming across, I hit a roll drop. Now, again, I'm thinking about what is my strength here? We've identified where they're gonna be vulnerable. Let's assume for a second my strength is actually driving or I just wanna put a, a different type of pressure. I'm gonna drive it because a volley on the move for JT is a tough shot. Okay. Okay. Boom. In a good example there, we identified that that's what was going to happen. JT was going to potentially be weak. He actually handled it brilliantly and he got himself back to a neutral position. As you'll see in the clip, he ran across, he handled my drive, and then we got back to a position where all four of us were thinking, you're not always going to win the point. You're just trying to be strong where they are weak enough times in a point where eventually you either earn a pop-up, you earn an error, or some type of way that you can win the point. So a, a good, just quick side pro tip, if you're serving and we know that they're most likely going to unwind, serve it wide. Right. Okay. So then he has to go wide and yeah. then run over. So we're trying to like spread that. him out a little bit. Like go that. ahead. Perfect. 
Right. Yeah. So actually, I love what JT just did there. He actually, he hit it down the line. He put it to my weaker spot. He's trying to be strong where I'm weak. I'm weaker on my backhand drive. But we also, it's a chess match a little bit. Tyler served the ball cross court, making JT move over toward the sideline before he was going to then run cross court to his preferred position. So I hit a decent enough backhand. I didn't have to be perfect because he was in such a vulnerable position. So we're able to take advantage of that and win. Again, it's not always about should you drop or should I drive? It's not always as easy as do that or do that this. It's a lot about be strong where they are weak. It's a lot about also be strong where I am strong. And at the end of the day, the game is going to ask you a lot of questions. And you want to put into your tool bag, into your backpack. When you go on court, you want to have different answers that you can pull out when the game asks you those questions. So at the end of the day, you go home you talk to your family and they said, how'd it go today? And you know what you say? I, I won. Backpack. <laughs> <laughs> you win more matches. Now, a lot of beginners struggle with this concept of when do I drop? When do I drive? Especially tennis players. So if you want to see a video about the seven mistakes tennis players should avoid when they transition to pickleball, click this video right here. Check the other videos in the description below. I'm teaching you all these things in my other videos as well, because I want you to be strong where your opponents are weak. So you get to go home, put your head on the pillow at night, look up to the ceiling and know that you gave it your best because as Sun Tzu once said, zoom in on my face, strike the inspirational music. Uh, what was the line again? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Victorious warriors win first, then go to war, where defeated warriors go to war, then seek to win. Cut. It's a serve, that's the first. JT hits the ball as a second, and Tyler pops it up for the third. Pops the ball up <laughs> for the third. Serve is the first, return is the second, and that's the third shot we're playing. Winner! Winner! Now typically you won't hit a winner on your third shot, but if you're this guy, you will. Play the point. Right. Now, in that scenario, my teammate team was team. actually the weak one. Now, be strong where they are weak. If your teammate is the weaker one, just get a new teammate. <laughs> yeah. Wow, Luke already just doing up Tyler. <laughs> oh, 14 year old just demolishes a 40 year old. That's pickleball. I'm 42. Why did, for a long time, you dro drove 100% of balls? And by 100%, I'm not even exaggerating. Yeah, well, it's just because I dropped it so high and the point would be over. I wasn't confident in my drop. So I put him into the net and I just wanted to keep playing. So I just drive him because I knew okay. I'd get over the net. <laughs> And your partner's still mad because the guy can't figure it out. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Good drive coming. Good drive coming. Oh, come on! <laughs> okay, I love it. I should have actually used a different example, which is if you're driving every ball and they're all going out, start dropping. <laughs> You want to be strong where they are weak, which means sometimes you'll drop, sometimes you'll drive. Now you'll know why. I'm only including him in this video. He's usually the guy getting made fun of, but the truth is he's actually really smart and- uh, Just not really good at pickleball. Yeah, yeah, you're a 4-0. I'm 398. Let's throw his duper up on the side. <laughs>